Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome back to another episode of Seek and Destroy and we have another Comic-Con at home video that we're going to make here and I'm going to talk about TV shows or at least the ones that have, were nice enough to email me and try to include me and stuff. And I know some of them asked for, they said, hey, if you're able to do interviews and stuff, we would love to have that happen. I'll see if I can't set some of those up for after Comic-Con, but because I have to work all weekend, I can't get the weekend off, um, I won't be able to, to line up any interviews right now, unfortunately. So this is what I'm bringing to you guys. Hopefully you guys like the information I have here. Here, and I'll put links to everything I talk about down below and I hope Comic-Con moving forward even though it's probably going to go back next year to having people physically go I hope that they still keep a level of this around where they still share some stuff online through YouTube because as a YouTuber myself, I just think that's cool and it's great for the community, in my opinion. So uh, so today we're going to talk about things that are kind of TV show related, um, starting with the Patrick show, the Patrick Star show from Nickelodeon. Um, so those of you who are SpongeBob fans and stuff, you already know you know what to look for at Nickelodeon on social media, at Official Patrick Star, at Nick Animation, at SpongeBob. Um, but I will put a link down below to the YouTube uh, panel that's going to be, which is not really a panel as so much it's a table read, uh, which is really cool. They're going to get the cast together. Uh, Bill, Tom, Cree, Jill, Dana, uh, a lot of people are going to get together and do a table read of an original episode of the Patrick Star Show. So if you're a big SpongeBob fan or if you just love that universe in general, if you love Patrick, definitely check it out Friday, July 9th at 7 p.m. Uh, Eastern Standard Time. It says Eastern Standard and Pacific Time uh, at like slash, but it says 7 p.m. So I, I'll put a link down below and it'll give you the information there. But I think that means 7 p.m. my time and 4 p.m. Uh, you know Comic-Con time or San Diego time, uh, West Coast time. So, uh, so yeah, they're going to do an episode called Late for Breakfast. Uh, so please check it out if you're a big fan of that stuff. It's going to look like they're going to have a great panel and a great group of people that are going to be reading this. And that's awesome. So for all you fans out there of SpongeBob, check it out. Maybe it'll be something fun to watch with your kids. Even though there's no animation stuff, I think these actors are going to be very um, animated and it probably in their performances. And I think it'll be a lot of fun. So be sure to check it out. Netflix will also be there, obviously, because Netflix, you know, is everywhere these days, which is cool because they put out a lot of great content. I like what Netflix does. And some of the stuff they have coming up, I'm very interested in. And some of the stuff is out right now that you guys are also big fans of because uh, it's been gaining. I'd say I've been seeing it trending and stuff in a lot of places and a lot of reviews have been going up. So we'll talk about all this. This is Netflix Geeked. Uh, or Geeked Cross Comic Con at home. And this is the official lineup that they have. They have some panels that are coming up on Friday, July 23rd at noon uh, uh, Pacific Standard Time. That'll be 3 p.m. my time. They'll have uh, the Masters of the Universe Revelation panel. Uh, and obviously that's Kevin Smith's new show. So that's going to be really cool that Netflix and Mattel Television are presenting this with an exclusive sneak peek at the highly anticipated animated series, uh, which is really cool. Since its creation in 1982, which is the year I was born. Uh, so so a lot of good things came out in 82. E.T., The Thing. I mean, there was so much good stuff. Tron. Um, but this new action pack series follows He-Man, Skeletor, Tila, and other classic characters of the Masters of the Universe franchise, picking up where the iconic characters left off decades ago. So that was one of the things Kevin Smith said was the show to him never had a conclusion. So this is him writing the finale of He-Man. So it's picking up right where the last episode. So if you go buy the box set, which I hopefully they release or they have released already of the original cartoon, that would be great to have the whole series in a box set. You could watch that and then right where that ends, you can watch this show apparently. So that's really cool that they're doing that. Um, and I'm a big Kevin Smith fan. So, and I'm so excited for Clerks 3. <laughs> so he just announced that the other day. Um, and then Netflix Geek also has Fear Street Trilogy. So this is something I've been seeing trending. R.L. Stein is a genius. I uh, love the Goosebumps books. Never did read Fear Street, but apparently what they did was they made a trilogy and once a week they're releasing movies on Netflix for Fear Street. And I think they're set in different decades or something, which is you know, pretty standard with a lot of things that happen nowadays in, in you know, Hollywood and movies and TV, but still, um, that's really cool. And I've been seeing a lot of positive feedback on this show. So if you're a big fan of how they're doing this, this trilogy of movies, you know, let me know down below. Cause I want to learn more about it. And I definitely want to go check it out at some point. I don't know if I'll do reviews of them. Maybe I will, but I definitely want to watch them at some point for sure. Uh, but that is going to have a panel at 4 PM uh, Pacific Standard Time, 7 p.m. my time on the East Coast on July 23rd. Again, I'll put links to this stuff down below. Um, they also have The Last Mercenary, another show uh, with Jean-Claude Van Damme and director David Caron. 
uh, after a peek inside the highly anticip uh, anticipated film, The Last Mercenary, set to premiere globally on July 30th on Netflix. So that's really cool. Jean-Claude Van Damme, he's awesome. <laughs> Great action star uh, from my day, from growing up in my day, but uh, but still awesome. I think appeared in The Expendables recently and has been doing a lot of uh, like Universal Soldier, and he's been bringing a lot of those franchises back. So it's cool to see that he's uh, you know going to have another movie coming out, and that's going to premiere on Netflix very, very soon. So they'll have a panel at 3 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, 6 p.m. my time on the East Coast on Saturday, July 24th. This show I'm really excited about is Lucifer. Uh, I believe this might be the final season of Lucifer. And uh, Tom Ellis uh, is amazing. This guy, this show is so awesome. In fact, even my mom started watching it because my mom, she was telling me about Vikings last year. And I was like, oh, yeah, I like Vikings and stuff. And she's like, well, what shows do you watch that, you know, maybe we haven't heard of? And I'm like, well, you probably watch Lucifer. And she goes, Lucifer? And I'm like, yeah, Lucifer. And she's like, the devil? And I'm like, yeah. I was like, you don't watch that show? And she's like, no. And I go, you should really watch it. And now she's hooked. <laughs> and so is my brother. So I'm a big fan of the show. I'm so glad it's coming back and it's getting a final season. I'm glad the show was saved to get these final seasons uh, by Netflix because the show, I think, was canceled. And Netflix was like, uh, nah, we this is cool. We'll, we'll take it from here. And I'm glad they did because uh, I thought the show has still been doing very well. So uh, so final season coming up. Very cool. They have the panel at 5 p.m. on Saturday, July 24th, Pacific Standard Time or 8 p.m. my time on the East Coast. Check that one out and uh, definitely watch the final season of the show, the sixth and final season. I'm so pumped for it. And last but not least from Netflix, we have Army of Thieves, which is the new Zack Snyder prequel to Army of the Dead. And this will be a panel on Sunday, July 25th at 2 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, uh, 5 p.m. my time here on the East Coast. And they say Army of the Dead was only the beginning. Well, kind of, I guess, because this is a prequel. So this is technically the beginning. But they released a cool poster out there that says it's produced by Zack Snyder and Deborah, his wife, um, and Wesley Collar will be joined by director and star Matthias uh, and Matthias, I'm going to butcher your last name, so I don't even know if I'm going to pronounce it. <laughs> Schweigerfer, uh, hopefully I didn't butcher that too much. Um, plus star Natalie Emmanuel are going to be reveal, uh, talking about the movie, revealing a little bit, of, you know, a few secrets about it probably, and talking about this uh, heist story that is set before and in the world of Army of the Dead. And uh, that's pretty cool. So it's an action-packed prequel, they call it, um, with our favorite safe cracker. And it says on the poster, uh, more safes, less zombies. I'll be honest with you, not a good tagline in my opinion. <laughs> like, I don't want less zombies, um, but uh, but still, I'm intrigued to see what they do. I wasn't a big fan of Army of the Dead, to be honest with you. I really didn't enjoy it at all. In fact, I didn't even review it because I didn't like it that much. Um, but maybe, I, you know, Zach is a talented guy. I do like a, a lot of his stuff that he's done before. Um, and so I'm curious to see what this is. He's producing it. And there's a different person directing, so who knows? Maybe I, I'm, I'll give this a chance to see if the at least the world, if there's something there in the world that want to, you know, will keep me around. Because the Army of the Dead movie on itself isn't enough to keep me in here, but maybe this could. I'm willing to give it a chance. But if you're a fan, I know a lot of you out there are Zack Snyder fans. So if so, definitely check out this panel on Sunday. I'll put a link to it down below. And one more thing I'm going to add to the Netflix section here, because uh, this just dropped like literally a minute ago, <laughs> uh, which is a, a new Witcher anime, which is coming to Netflix in August. On August 23rd, it's called The Witcher Nightmare of the Wolf. This just released a teaser trailer, so I will put a link to that down below so you can check it out for yourself. I just watched it. It looks awesome, um, and it's got like some nice humor in it, but the animation style looks sick. I actually really like the animation style. It's very clean, um, so I, I'm digging it, So and it actually looks kind of anime-ish. I feel like some of the Netflix shows, like uh, they're like, oh, it's anime, but it's not really anime. It's like the CGI Resident Evil one or the CGI Transformer one, and so this is like, okay, we got Castlevania and this and a couple other shows. Yeah, okay, and I think some of the Godzilla stuff, so yeah, this is cool. I'm very excited for this, and uh, I actually was about to get into the Witcher universe because I've never played the games, uh, but uh, but I do I have played the card game a little bit, like the standalone card game, or I've seen someone play it for a little bit. Um, so that was kind of neat seeing that, and then uh, then obviously Henry Cavill plays the live action version of The Witcher on Netflix. So I'm going to check out the first season and finally catch up with the show. And uh, now I'm excited because now there's an anime that comes out that ties into it. So if you're a fan of Witcher. Check out that trailer and let me know your thoughts of that show down below. Destination Fear is going to be returning for its third season, and they're going to be having a panel at uh, Comic-Con on Friday, July 23rd at 5 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, 8 p.m. my time here on the East Coast. There's a lot of stuff happening on Friday. I mean, most of the panels we've talked about in our episodes so far 
have been Friday panels. I think the Netflix ones were the first ones to be on Saturday and Sunday. <laughs> so, uh, so this is cool though. Destination Fear is, um, is kind of like a show about ghost hunting, you know, like I'm sure a lot of you, maybe some of you have heard the, or seen the show before or checked it out. Uh, me, I'm kind of new to it. Uh, so when I saw this information, I was like, ah, let me go check it out a little bit. And I did. And I was like, oh, okay. So it's on Travel Channel and Discovery Plus if you have that app. And new episodes will be de debuting on Saturdays at 9 p.m. on Travel Channel and then begin uh, begin streaming the same day on Discovery Plus for the new season. And so uh, so they're going to have a panel to talk about it on Friday. So this is cool. I mean, I know like I watch uh, Red Letter Media and I know Mike is a big fan of uh, ghost hunting shows. I like uh, ghost hunting stuff when I see like people's tiktok videos on it like where you catch something in the background or something those are always just kind of fun to watch i'm not a very like a uh, spiritual person in that way where i you know where i think ghosts are hanging out to, like messing with us uh but i i still think it's a neat uh a phenomenon in a way that people are invested in and do have beliefs in and so I would obviously never trounce on anyone else's belief system uh, but I, it's for it's not really my thing but I do have an interest in it from like a just like a creative standpoint like I'm like oh that's that would be neat if that were a real thing um, and so I, I typically do dip in and out on shows like this so I might check this out destination fear and if you want to check it out too I'll put a link to the panel down below and that'll give you more information about where you can watch it obviously you can watch it on travel channel or uh, discovery plus if you have that um, but uh, but for the new episodes they'll talk more about it at the panel and the last thing I want to talk about is again from my friends at impact 24 so big shout out to them thank you ladies for always sending me this stuff you did last year sent me some really cool things that we made videos on and now this year again you know you've been in both of my episodes so far so this is really cool uh, as well so what we have here is another list of panels so I'm gonna put a link to all these panels down below and tell you a little bit about them and you know what it's gonna include or a little bit about what it's gonna include so the first panel we have here is the second annual Hollywood game changers a conversation with women behind popular film and TV TV projects um, and then also the changing the status quo with film and TV creatives so this is another impact 24 uh, collaboration which is great because that they I mentioned them in my previous episode with the uh, Avandu Vasi I believe comic book stuff and so it's really cool to see them uh, you know again with women here you know having all these women coming and doing this for the second year in a row talking about different things they worked on like uh, SWAT uh, Julie and the Phantom shadow and bone why women kill drunk history things like that also the Ratatouille two-e TikTok musical. Uh, so there will be a lot of cool stuff on this panel. And that is going to be on Saturday, July 24th at 10 a.m. Pacific Standard Time, uh, which will be, I think, 1 p.m. my time. And so again, I'll put a link down below. So that's going to be really awesome. That's on Saturday. And then we also have on Saturday at 6 p.m. the Changing the Status Quo. Uh, and that's 6 p.m. Pacific Time and 9 p.m. my time, obviously. And again, link down below. Uh, this is called Changing the Status Quo with Film and TV Creatives. So this is an intimate discussion with film and television creators who who are using their craft to change the status quo by bringing diverse voices on screen and behind the camera. Learn how they got their career started, where they're going, and how they're opening doors for the next generation of creatives. Featuring projects Julie and the Phantom, SWAT, uh, Genius, Arethia, uh, Panic, Savior, and Three Two Spoons of Sugar. And the panelists will be Aaron, George, Jennifer, Brian, Christopher, and Dr. Shippo P. Maka and Cabello Maka, co-founders of Cablo Studios, and three teaspoons of sugar. And this will be moderated by senior artisans editor at Variety, Jazz. So there you go. Um, not Jazz the Transformer, <laughs> but Jazz the Person. Uh, so that's going to be really fun. That'll be on Saturday as well. So, so thank you all for watching this episode or listening to it. Uh, hopefully I talked about some panels that you want to check out. And please do, if any of these interested you, please check them out. Links to everything I talked about in today's episode are down below. I'm excited to see what they're going to do with the Netflix stuff, especially. I'm really excited to see some of those panels. Uh, the Patrick Show, for those of you out there who have kids, I'm sure my nephew will might dig on something like that. Hopefully, they'll have some kind of visuals up there, but I know it's a table read, so it's mainly just going to be people you know, talking, but if they're doing the voices, I know my nephew will get a kick out of it. Um, and then Destination Fear sounds like something I'm going to check out, but I definitely want to check out the Changing the Status Quo one with the film and TV creatives, uh, but the second annual Hollywood Game Changer, I'm I might also get it uh, if I get time I'll check that one out as well I might it might be like a week or so later uh, th that I'll get to watch it but I will definitely watch it and check it out so I hope you guys do too and let me know your thoughts of all this down in the comments below as always thanks so much for watching the show like share subscribe all that fun stuff and I'll see you in the future peace